Good afternoon on today's Angry Alien Bulletin. The FAA is reporting a rash of close encounters with unidentified flying objects. Now, most of these objects are being reported as drones, but many of them, as you can see, don't appear to be drones at all, but some sort of strange cylindrical objects or something else that has pilots and passengers scratching their heads. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. This is part three of our so-called Alien Week. We had a live stream about the topic over the weekend. Then I released another piece about alien propulsion, or rather a new type of propellantless propulsion, <laughs> say that three times quick, that might be able to explain how UFOs perform the types of maneuvers in our atmosphere that we have observed in the past. And now we're going to talk about the FAA and their various experiences with UFOs, or rather the experiences of pilots with UFOs, both recently and in the past, that have been reported to the FAA. Probably the most amazing of these reports was an incident that took place in the 1980s involving a Japanese airliner and an utterly colossal UFO that was reportedly the size of two aircraft carriers. Now, recently, we haven't had these kinds of experiences reported to the FAA, but what we have had instead is a rash of drone reports. This is the sort of thing, of course, that we should expect to see given how common drones are in our skies compared to how things used to be in previous decades. But some of these encounters really don't seem to correspond with commercial drones, the types of drones that are becoming an epidemic. Very seldom do you see commercial drones flying as high as 10 to 20,000 feet, even though some of them are definitely capable of this, although that would only be the more expensive top-end type of drones, drones used for movie footage, that sort of thing. But we are starting to have these kinds of encounters occurring with commercial airliners, close encounters, dangerous encounters. But what is also becoming more common is encounters with so-called drones that don't seem to correspond to anything that really looks like a drone. And I think it's worth considering that it's very possible that when airline pilots are spotting UFOs these days, it's probably in their best interest to report these objects as being drones because it's just better for their reputations and for their careers to report them as drones as opposed to something else, something strange something that we can't explain. But interestingly enough, just a day or so ago on News Nation, a report emerged of a close encounter with a UFO that really doesn't appear to be drone-like in its configuration, in its speed, etc., that made a close encounter with an airliner. And this close encounter was caught on film by a young mother who just happened to be filming the New York skyline as the plane was on approach to LaGuardia Airport. It happened so quickly that if you blinked, you might have missed it. Actually, it's very impressive that this young mother actually spotted this tiny detail and then rewound it, looked at it again a number of times to see what it might be. And after doing that a number of times, she really couldn't come to any definite conclusions. And after looking at it a number of times myself, I also can't really come to any sort of definite conclusions. And it is these kinds of encounters that we're going to be talking about today. The sorts of encounters that airline pilots have made to the FAA that on the surface are reported as being drones, but in reality don't seem like drones at all. The three crew members of Japan Airlines Flight 1628 were on their way to Tokyo from Paris with a cargo of French wine. They had just left Canadian airspace and entered Alaska when pilot Kenji Tarauchi says he saw several wavering yellowish-white lights. The 
crew members dimmed the cockpit lights to make sure the lights were not just a reflection. They said they observed a walnut-shaped object as long as two aircraft carriers illuminated by the cargo plane's flashing strobe lights. The UFO stayed with the cargo plane for about 50 minutes, following the plane's every move during a 360-degree turn and again when the pilot descended 1,200 meters. About 130 kilometers from Fairbanks, Alaska, the crew says the UFO disappeared over the horizon into Canada. According to initial news reports, the unidentified flying object had appeared on both Federal Aviation Administration and military radar screens. But FAA spokesman Paul Stuckey says the double radar images first reported have now been dismissed by experts as something called clutter or split signals sometimes produced by a plane's navigational devices. Yet Paul Stuckey describes the crew members as credible observers and says the FAA is taking the November sighting seriously. In his words, they saw what they saw. What it was, we don't know. Skeptics insist the encounter has a logical explanation. Philip Klass is a member of the Committee for the Investigation into Claims of the Paranormal, an organization that debunks such phenomena as flying saucers, communication with the dead, and fortune-telling. Philip Klass believes the pilot did indeed see something extraterrestrial, the planet Jupiter. He says the giant planet was directly in front of the plane's main heading and would appear especially clear in the clean air over Alaska. Also, bright stars or planets appear to follow every move by a plane. But Philip Klass predicts that the pilot, who appeared on several TV and radio shows, will never admit he may have seen Jupiter because of the professional embarrassment it would cause. The Federal Aviation Administration will release a final report on the incident by the end of January. FAA spokesman Paul Stuckey admits there is little more the agency can add now that experts have dismissed the radar record, but he says investigators are certain of one thing, the crew of the Japanese plane had not been drinking its cargo of French wine. I'm Bill Torrey. Now, the FAA's final report in 1987 that covered this particular incident really didn't reveal any more information than we already knew. Both of the crew members on the Japanese airline or Japanese cargo plane actually confirmed what they had seen or at least attested that they had seen the same thing, but there is no other corroborating evidence, assuming, of course, that what the FAA says about the radar record is indeed true. But these sorts of things are starting to happen a lot more frequently. Not, of course, encounters with UFOs this colossal, but instead encounters with unidentified, unmanned aircraft. Most of them drones, but not all of them. As I mentioned before, a young mother named Michelle Reyes appeared on News Nation recently sharing her footage of a cylindrical shaped object passing the airliner that she happened to be flying in on approach to LaGuardia Airport. No explanation has been presented for what this object was, and the FAA has not responded to any of her reports on the incident thus far. What this object is, or what any of these other objects might be, are still a bit of a mystery. So let's go ahead and go through some of these accounts. The majority of these are mandatory occurrence reports that were taken from a website called The War Zone. I tend to avoid UFO websites in particular because oftentimes they can be biased and a lot of their factual information can be a little less than credible. I try to look at non-UFO websites wherever possible. So let's go ahead and start out with what is a typical FAA drone report. And this, by the way, was a associated with a nuclear reactor. These sorts of incidents are very concerning. As a matter of fact, the environmental organization Greenpeace deliberately flew a drone into a nuclear reactor to demonstrate just how vulnerable these things are to attack. But in any event, this is a 2017 report from the Palo Verde power plant and security reported two large UAS flying over the power plant. The 
county sheriff was notified. Security reported unauthorized UAS activity in the vicinity of their nuclear power plant. At 2.34 in the morning, they saw two rotorcraft UAS fly directly overhead the plant, split up, and then fly off in different directions. Once again, specifically described as rotorcraft, so we can probably presume that these were indeed conventional drones. However, there's another incident from Wintersburg, Arizona. Also, the Palo Verde nuclear power plant security advised that five to six UAS with red and white flashing lights were orbiting the power plant and water reservoir areas at approximately 200 feet. The UAS possibly had spotlights attached and were over the plant for over an hour. Maricopa County Sheriff was apparently notified and nothing happened. Nothing was ever discovered about this incident. Red and white flashing lights are not the sort of lights that are associated with typical FAA hazard avoidance lights, nor are they typically associated with most drones, but still, it might have been a conventional drone, still can't be certain because of the vagueness of the report. And there were a number of others associated with nuclear power plants, such as one that took place in Minneapolis. A nuclear power plant reported a UAS in the owner's area of the Monticello nuclear plant. The UAS was not in the protected area. The Wright County Sheriff was notified. Preliminary information from the FAA uh, reports that the security shift manager at the Monticello nuclear power plant reported seeing a UAS with red and green lights that went through the owner's controlled airspace at approximately 250 to 300 feet northwest to southeast in a straight line. No evasive action was taken. Wright County Sheriff notified. And again, the UAS operators were never found. All of this seems to have the same characteristics in common. These drones seem to be drones, however, lots of them are not described exactly as drones typically appear, and then when local law enforcement is informed about the incident, nobody is ever tracked down. Here's another one from August 31st, 2018. Quote, Illinois State Police report that they received reports from Clinton Power Station Nuclear Power Plant in Clinton, Illinois. Units are en route to the scene. Police reported three drones, one over the cooling lake with red and white lights, one over tower number five, and the third drone no longer in sight. And then shortly thereafter, November of 2018 in New Orleans, preliminary information from the FAA op suggests that two UASs were reported over power plants at New Orleans, Louisiana. No description of the UASs were reported, no evasive action taken. According to the summary, St. Charles Parish Sheriff called and asked if there is anything we could do about two drones flying over Dow chemical plants and nuclear power plants. They were trying to locate the operators. Once again, the operators were never found. And then in February of 2019, just a couple of months later, another FAA report, this time from San Luis Obispo in California. Security was advised at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant that a possible low-flying aircraft or UAS passed over the plant in California. Highway Patrol was notified. And then in September of 2019, the Cooper Nuclear Station in Nebraska entered into a heightened state of security due to drone activity in the vicinity of the facility. Local law enforcement was, of course, informed, and you guessed it, once again, nothing was found. Law enforcement received a call from the Cooper Nuclear Facility stating that they were going into a higher state of security due to UAS activity in the vicinity of the facility. Then we go to 
Toledo, Ohio. This was in July of 2019. A rash of these incidents taking place at nuclear power plants all at roughly the same time. In Toledo, Ohio, security was advised that a UAS with red and white lights were flying northeast to southwest below 500 feet by the cooling towers. The UAS proceeded into the marsh area. No aircraft involved. Law enforcement was apparently not notified this time. The summary of the incident says that the security officer called to report UAS flew over cooling tower at under 500 feet, one red and one white light at approximately 9.31 p.m. It flew northwest to southeast towards the marsh, then the shoreline, did not hover or drop anything. Security officer contacted and made a report with the local county sheriff's department. So apparently somebody was eventually informed. And then February 2020, Russellville, Arkansas. This just goes on and on. At the Arkansas Nuclear One power plant, a UAS briefly stopped over the facility and then proceeded to the northwest away from the area. Now, this time, we have some very detailed descriptions. A three-foot white four-rotor UAS with red, green, and white flashing lights. The Pope County Sheriff was notified. Facility entered into a heightened state of awareness. Now, all of this could just be the activity of a particularly widely traveled prankster with a lot of drones at his disposal, and also the ability to evade law enforcement on a regular basis, or it could be some sort of espionage activity. If it is that, well, that's a serious cause for concern because we're looking at spies who seem to be able to operate with complete impunity over United States nuclear facilities. However, the UAS incidents get a lot more interesting when we look at some of the FAA military reports. Keep in mind, the FAA only allows UASs to travel up to an altitude of 400 feet, and most commercially available drones, at least hobby type drones, definitely can't fly higher than a few thousand feet altitude wise, but admittedly there are a wide variety of drones that are available to professional filmmakers that can definitely fly higher than that. On February 8th of 2016, in Goldsboro, North Carolina, an F-15 reported an unknown type of UAS at an altitude of 13,000 feet. Later on, in March 29th of 2016, so just a month later, in Virginia Beach, Virginia, there was preliminary information from the FAA that reported that an F-18 observed a UAS operating at an altitude of about 12,000 feet heading east, although no evasive action was reported. Then a mere month later, actually less than that, on April 19th of 2016, again, Virginia Beach, Virginia, the FAA reported that the Naval Air Station advised that an F-18 observed four UASs, one red and three black, hovering at 11,000 feet. No other details aside from their color and no evasive action taken. Then, on September 10th of 2017, in Camp Springs, Maryland, things got really interesting. An F-16 observed two silver metallic UASs while westbound at an altitude of 4,000 feet. The drones were cylindrical in shape and operating at an unauthorized altitude. The local police were informed and once again found nothing. And boy, the stories just keep coming. December 18th, 2017, at Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. On this occasion, an F-18 reported a silver UAS, traveling eastbound at 70 knots, just 70 knots, a thousand feet below the aircraft, while maneuvering at 17,000 feet. So once again, we're talking about a drone maybe operating at 16 
15,000 feet against, again, drones. Some, anyway, can technically operate at this type of altitude, but not very commonly. And a similar incident in the same area also reported an unknown UAS flying eastbound at 16,400 feet. This one, by the way, was tracked on radar, which means it couldn't have been a balloon of some kind, if you're thinking high altitude balloons as a possible explanation. The F-18 verified the track. Apparently, the F-18 was responding to the radar track and reported eight other possible UAS operating in the same vicinity. In this case, local law enforcement was not informed for some reason. And the stories just keep coming. February 16th, 2018, Mayport, Florida. According to the FAA, an F-18 reported a UAS while westbound at 10,000 feet over the ocean. March 20th, 2018, in Louisville, Georgia. Two UASs were reported at 16,000 feet, relatively small UASs apparently, and this, by the way, was an F-35 that made this particular sighting. So we're talking about an aircraft with extremely advanced tracking systems, and interestingly enough, the two objects merged on the aircraft radar display. The aircraft terminated operations in the region to avoid further conflict. 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 That's a very interesting term. Evasive action, however, was not reported. We're not sure if local law enforcement was notified in this particular incident. And then a month later, April 30th, 2018, Snow Hill, Maryland. According to the FAA, an F-18 reported a shiny, round, black UAS 500 feet above the aircraft while it was climbing from 16,500 feet. Once again, no evasive action taken, but they aren't describing anything like a drone here, at least not if you compare it to the other reports that you can get on this article. Really, most of the reports that involve drones are very specific in their descriptions. The other ones are pretty damn vague. Here's another one. November 20th, 2000. 20. Glendale, Arizona, an F-16 reported a black UAS, that's all they say about it, a black UAS while northbound at 17,500 feet while operating within the Gladden military operating area. Once again, no evasive action taken. And if you're interested in good old-fashioned flying saucers, well, got some sightings for you as well. On August 2015, Charleston, West Virginia, the FAA reported that a HealthNet HN5 helicopter reported two UASs saucer-like at 1,700 feet. They apparently passed very close to the helicopter, and it was described as a near mid-air collision. Then January 2016, in Portland, Oregon, a Boeing 737 reported seeing a gold saucer-shaped UAS 100 feet below the aircraft left wing at an altitude of 5,100 feet. Again, no evasive action was taken. If you, there are so many reports here. You could just get lost in the middle of all of them. They are absolutely legion in their number. And so in my mind, there are three possibilities here. One, that we have some pranksters who are unbelievably good at evading law enforcement. Two, we have some extremely active espionage going on who don't seem to be very discriminating about what sort of aircraft they're spying on because sometimes they're spying on news choppers as often as they spy on military aircraft. Or number three, we have a combination of different events going on, some of them being drones, but some of them being something else. And I'm going to share one more incident with you, but before I do that, I would like to thank Anna Raginska and Lucas Sedgwick, who are my latest Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for helping me climb that hill to get to 1% of my subscribers being Patreon supporters. Once I reach that level,
level, I will be able to really improve the quality of what I do on this channel. So if you're interested and you'd like to also get access to exclusive content and early release content, all the details are in the description. So here's this last very interesting incident once again coming back to Alaska where we started with that huge UFO this one not quite the same but still very strange a commercial aircraft on climb out of the Anchorage Airport was about to make a turn and saw a drone it was described as a disc black and very shiny and had what looked like a cylinder hanging from the bottom of the disc so we have both a cylinder and a saucer for those of you who are into both kinds of ufos thank you very much for watching please like please subscribe and until we find out a lot more about what's happening in our skies i urge all of you to stay angry about space